Question is from Trevor Way 16. What foods do you think are most wrongfully demonized and what foods do you think are overhyped? Oh, wrongfully demonized is easy. Red meat. That's a very easy one for me to point out. Oh, I was um, going to say butter. Not well. It used to be, <laughs> but not maybe not as much. That's a good one though. Eggs, yeah. Yeah. R- red meat for sure. They Here's the deal with red meat. It's the it's the most nutrient dense meat uh animal protein. It's extremely nutrient dense. Um, you could actually get away with just eating red meat for a very, very long time. It's got a very high source of creatine, which creatine has been shown to not just benefit athletic performance, that's obvious, but it's also been shown to benefit heart health. It's been shown to benefit uh, brain health. Um, in, in, in my uh, opinion, in the next 10 to 15 years, they're going to recommend creatine to everybody, including kids, um, because it's been shown to have so many uh, and crazy, uh, amazing, excuse me, amazing uh, benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, red meat has been shown. Some people say all the studies show red meat contributes to some colon cancer, this and that. First off, the the increases are tiny, and they don't tend to they tend to not control for processed mm-hmm. red meat, salamis and sausages and those types of meats. Which, you know, processed meats are like other processed foods. They're not nearly as healthy and they tend to not, you know, cut out like burgers and shit like that. So if somebody says, you know, if you look at the average American and you say, oh, all these people tend to eat a lot of red meat and you don't control for what kind of red meat, like where do you think most Americans get their red meat from? Yeah, burgers. Burgers. Burgers tend to come with sodas and bread and other shit and and, and fries and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Most people are not getting their red meat from healthy quality sources. Yeah, grass fed, grass finished. Yeah, or like steaks. Exactly. So red meat for sure overly. Yeah, uh, no, no, I'll I'll keep in the red meat. Uh, cause I do see that a lot. That's the, that's the new target number one. And, and because there's so much, uh, interest in being able to sort of solve all these massive, like global issues with it, whether it's environment, whether it's like, you know, like space, you know, on the planet, whatever it is, like there's, there's a lot of interest there. And so they're already creating like these fake meats beyond Besides the Beyond Burger and all these types of things, they actually have like these 3D printed steaks now, which I saw the other day. Somebody like pointed out to me and it's it's going to keep being a thing. And and, and what's going to make that relevant is to demonize red meat, right? Like we, the, it, it, it's this massive push to push us off of consuming red meat. So that way we can adopt uh, this new like Franken meat. Yeah. And again, the problem with controlling for these studies is most people who eat a lot of red meat are eating a lot of burgers, a lot of sausage, a lot of, ter- you know, not as good sources. Uh, but when you look at, you know, the better sources, God, you break down red meat, man, again, it's the most nutrient-dense common meat that you can find. It's got almost everything that your body needs, so completely wrongfully demonized. I agree. I think that I mean, I like the butter and oil thing too, though, because I feel like it's it hasn't even been that long in my own personal diet that I begin really using a lot of butter and oil because I come from the generation of low no fat, fat yeah. right. and oil. You and think bu- immediately like heart attack if yeah. you see somebody yeah. slathering butter on everything. Right. But if you're somebody who eats primarily whole foods and you use oil or butter to make your vegetables taste better, God, it's amazing. It's, yeah. and, and I and What a great example too, because here's what happened with the, the hysteria around butter. People stopped eating butter and they replaced it with margarine vegetable yeah. sourced oils. fat you know oils that tasted like butter because people like butter so the demonization of butter resulted in worse health yeah. because then people started consuming these partially hydrogenated oils like margarine which we were told is better because it's not butter i can't believe it and now we know for a fact that those were bad. They're not just worse, they're bad. Yeah. Um, and so that's the problem. Same thing with with red meat. The demonization of red meat is gonna cause people to eat foods that are bad for them. So yeah, wrongfully, totally wrong. Now, what do you guys think are some overhyped foods? Oh, like I got foods a good one. that like superfoods or foods that people say that are like, oh my God, cure all type shit. Like, what do you I think? got a good one. Oh, right. and, and it's overhyped does not mean that this food is bad. It just means it's overhyped. Fruit. I think fruit is totally overhyped. Anytime you see mm. somebody, a study, talk about a healthy diet, they talk about lots of fruits, vegetables, and nuts. But when you control for just fruit and you cut out the vegetables and other stuff, it's not – yes, there's some nutrients in fruit that are, are good, and it's not bad for you, but mm. I wouldn't put them up there with you know the healthiest foods that you could possibly consume. They, they, contain, they tend to contain a lot of sugar – 
We've modified fruit to become these calorie I'm, sugar bombs. I'm going to agree with you if it's anything except for berries. Because if it's blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, raspberries, it falls in the berry group. Uh, the bang for your buck nutrient-wise yeah. is phenomenal. Fiber, antioxidants, and the calories that mm -hmm. you consume in that, I still would consider it. Any, but everything have, else, pears, bananas, grapes, I, will, I mean, all, all the other- all dude, They the, got cotton candy-flavored grapes. Bananas which are amazing, have no the seeds in them. I know. It's like they turn it into candy. And um, look, you, you just wait to the point where if they could uh, you know, breed- uh, blueberries to become the size of apples, you'd start to mm. see that too, and then it would lose its, yeah. you know, its total value. I have no idea. I think like, is whole grains still a thing? Like, <laughs> oh god! Because that was, I remember that was so pushed on everybody. That's like, oh, it's ancient grains, or it's like whole grains. Yeah. And uh, you know, let's be honest. Like, what what are you really getting from that? Like, nutrient wise, and then also like how much you have to process it just to be able to digest it. So I just, uh, I don't see a whole lot of value in that. I find other carb sources uh, a lot more valuable if I'm like looking for that, uh, you know, type of nutrient. Yeah. I would I would throw uh, sugar free substitutes um, in here also. Oh. As oh, far yeah. as overhyped, uh, when we look at the research on does it help people actually technically lose weight, even though it's zero calories, everything points to that it doesn't. No, because it just it just people eat more. Right. So if you know why go through this whole idea of you know eating this artificial sweetener in, in pursuit of not consuming more calories when all the research is showing that it's not really helping. You want to hear an interesting study around that? So the vast majority of people who consume. Uh, sugar-free uh, products are consuming a beverage. It's typically soda, by far, right? Soda, uh, you know, artificially sweetened, you know, zero-calorie sodas, by far make up the, the vast bulk of the zero-calorie artificially sweetened products, right? Wouldn't you guys agree? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those products are almost never consumed by themselves. It's almost, typically, typically people are not consuming a diet soda and not having anything else with it. They're typically consuming the diet soda along with French fries, burger, pizza, or some other you know higher calorie food. Well, they just showed a study uh, that showed that consuming artificially sweetened zero calorie beverages and then following up with a high carbohydrate whatever, whether it be French fries or popcorn or something else, actually changes the way the body processes the carbohydrates and could encourage, the study said could potentially encourage uh, insulin resistance. So it actually is a bad combination. So if you're drinking your, if you're at the movies and you got your candy and your popcorn and then your diet soda, that might not be a good thing. You might actually combine the two because what happens is you're sending a, a, a very powerful sweet signal to the brain. Artificially sweetened products are far sweeter than sugar uh, sweetened products. That signal goes to the brain. The body anticipates X amount of carbohydrates or sugar doesn't get them, but it, it it operates as if it's going to get them, and that's the theory behind what's going now, on. Now, I have a food group that I think is underrated, which I think that, um, you know, not till recently, and we Jeez. do address this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Barbecue How'd sauce you guess? And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, this is not going to sound right coming out of my mouth, but um, no, mushrooms. I've, I, feel, yeah. I feel like oh, I've, I've listened to so many different podcasts and like watch documentaries uh, and just like we are just not utilizing the benefits of, of mushrooms enough. Like you talk, you listen to somebody like Paul Stamets or, or Taro, who's like the head of Four Sigmatic. Uh, and that's kind of what, what led us into that. There's medicinal value, but there's also like digestive value. There's lots of like values nutrient wise that we get like solely from mushrooms. What a great, great uh, point you just brought up. Yes. And you know why? Because people um, consider mushrooms to be part of a vegetable family. That's its so own category. No, yeah, it's, it's not. It's not. It's, it's totally different. It's a fungus. It's, it's a own. fungus. So what ends up happening is somebody's like, oh, I'm eating healthy. I, I am eating you know, a couple servings of vegetables every day. And they don't consider that mushrooms are separate. Um, if you look at all the ancient health practices, Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, mushrooms are always a part of them. Um, they have lots and lots of health properties that are unique to mushrooms when you compare them to other food groups. So I love that you brought that up. I think that's a, that's a very big one.